Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. This is our last afternoon on Mackinac Island. We've had such a fantastic time. Beautiful weather. It's 102 back home. It's like 60 something right now. Absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, so we're hoping to catch a carriage ride out to the East Bluff uh, where there's some more gardens so we can give you a little bit more uh, tour, a little bit more of a view of what the island is like. Uh, and I did my presentation this morning. I think it went well. There was, I think, about 500 or a little bit more than 500 people in the room. It was massive. I got through it. I'm kind of glad it's over. But the whole uh, group of people was just like the most sweet, most gracious group of people ever. So um, I actually have a little tour map here to give you kind of point of reference of where everything's at. So this is where we're at right now, right here. Um, this is where gardens one through nine are. They kind of uh, line the West Bluff is what this area is called. This is downtown, which I toured people through garden number 10, Chestnut Cottage yesterday. We're heading out here to Bellevue is what this garden's called. And this is on the East Bluff. So we're just in front of the hotel, just waiting for a carriage. Hello. Hello there. How are you? Good. So to get to these gardens, you have a few different options. Last year we rode our bikes everywhere around to get to all of them. And we decided this year to take the horse and carriage ride uh, and take a little bit of a break. It's kind of fun riding around the island like this. You can really enjoy the view um, or you can walk, but it is quite a trek. You saw that map, that tour guide, uh, and it's quite a distance from the first garden all the way out to the number 16, but check out this view. So we're at the next house. This one is called Craig Marr, and we're here with Gabby. We were able to snag her. She just finished touring a group of people through. She works for Jack here on the island. Super awesome and knowledgeable. Super excited to be able to go through this garden with her because she knows all the deets and like all the details on the history and the plants. Um, and a lot of times I ID things incorrectly. <laughs> so it's all maybe, good. Maybe we'll get some stuff right in this garden. For sure. So right away in the entrance of the garden, you see lots of color, which is so nice. Like Super Tunia Vista Fuchsia. Um, there's some impatiens and geraniums, and there's a ship in the distance. That's what we call a freighter break on Mackinac Island. It's when all the contractors stop and take a look at the at the Straits of Mackinac and just enjoy the beauty oh. of the freighter. That's so cool. Yeah. See? <laughs> okay, so something else that I thought was really cool up here in this box is the use of a black, black lace elderberry because this shrub typically gets really good size. Yeah. But you huge. know, you, you can utilize it in a container for totally quite a while before yeah. you need to plant it out. And it's such a neat look, especially with this. For sure. All right, so we're cruising around the porch here to the back part of the garden. And I think we'll have Gabby fill us in on this first part and kind of explain for sure. like what's going on here. Yeah. So this cottage, like we mentioned, is a full historical restoration. Um, these tiers are, are very purposeful in their uses and their recreational purposes. So this first tier is what we call the kitchen cutting garden. Um, we have some beautiful herb planters that were locally built that um, just have, you know, your classic basic herbs that are used. Uh, the kitchen is right on the back side of this house, so it's super um, usable to get to and and it's awesome. The the style of this back garden is is what we call an English style garden with these tight boxwood hedges. Which makes me love it even yes. more. That's your style? It is my I style. Love it. Yeah. yeah, we love mulching, pine bark, cedar bark, um, and that kind of thing. We use the annual color, but for the most part, we're really fading into some true perennial gardens back here and some really old school, beautiful flowers um, like lilies and simus uh some great varieties of hydrangeas and just mm -hmm. some beautiful stuff. So. Is this like Invincible Spirit right here? I believe here? it is, yeah. This looks very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at the blooms on that thing. There's a fresh one right there, kind of more of an intense pink, pink and then an aged out bloom. Yeah, and I love how hydrangeas can change colors throughout the seasons and- uh, More bang for your buck. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And then, okay, so here are the herb boxes that Gabby mm -hmm. was talking about right here. Um, and these were built right on the island, right? Yeah, they are actually built by Jack Barnwell's brother, Emery Barnwell. Um, he's an amazing boat builder and he builds a lot of our wood pieces that we incorporate into our gardens. So and cool. Yeah, so it's cool to use some local talent. Yeah. Did he build these boxes? I was wondering that earlier. He didn't build these boxes. Ah. These are super um, historic, uh, you know, and were built with the restoration that happened in 2000. But he did build the um, arbor that we'll see ahead that's just super stunning and beautiful. The view. 
the view back here, yes. like the vista all the way back to that back wall yep. is just absolutely stunning. And then the use of topiaries too, for me, like the boxwood hedges and then we've got topiaries. Can't ask that's, for anything better. That's all I need. <laughs> Let's take a look at this next here. It's a pretty stunning um, part of this landscape. Features a full-blown swimming pool. What was her historically here was a wading pond or a reflection pond. It would have been about a foot and a half deep, but now it was restored into a full-blown swimming pool. And they use it all the time, which is cool to so pretty. use the spaces that you have. Well, and seeing, because I could see from down below, I could see these big uh, clumps of rudbeckia up here. Mm -hmm. Like how eye-catching they are and how old-fashioned this yes, flower looks. Totally. And seeing it mirrored up there. So you've got a sense of balance in this area. And also balance in that, you know, you've got your two topiaries on both sides with the spirals. And the same mixture of plants in pots on each side. So you've got like diamond frost euphorbia and then a fireworks penicetum. That's a really pretty mix. Yeah. Did you I do that? It. I did. Huh? Yeah. I love it. I get to help design a lot of our containers and gardens. Really beautiful. So, and then another thing that I thought was really interesting, you'll have to explain about this big rose in the corner. Yeah. You see that huge shrub up there? So this rose is one of our favorite parts of the landscape because it was actually planted with the original landscape back around 1890 when the house was built. Um, so believe it or not, that is original, about 120 years old, and we, crazy. Just, we just love it. It's, it's very dear to our hearts as, little, as the gardeners, as well as the homeowners, and uh, we're very protective of it. So Did you say what color it was already? Yeah, not yet, but it blooms in blush pink, mm. and it's super fragrant, um, just, you know, provides this kind of mist of beautiful smells, oh. you know, when it's blooming. Wish we could see it in bloom right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> Another thing I noticed too um, going through was the nine barks yeah. on either side. What variety is that? I have no idea actually. Is it like a Diablo or a, looks kind of like a Diablo foliage. Yeah. I could be wrong, but it's a deeper lobed foliage and it's still bold, um, but it's absolutely gorgeous with the Rudbeckia right down here mm -hmm. below. Yeah, we really love pretty. using different color, color foliages to just accent each other, mm -hmm. especially using darker foliages like a nine bark, or if it's a different type of garden, a um, black lace sambucus mm. to, to just create that black canvas mm -hmm. that you can then paint your color onto. Well, and I see that you have really planned like the um, texture too. For sure. Like the different textures yeah. coming out. This is like, is this called Lucifer? Crocosamy. Crocosamy yeah. is a variety Lucifer. Yeah, I think so. Oh. I knew half of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> We're a good team. <laughs> And so during these garden tours, uh, there are some really amazingly talented artists set up doing their work, which is so fun for the groups coming through and touring through these gardens. They get to see like these pieces of art coming together. So anyway, yours this looks is, amazing. Yeah, this is Kevin. Uh, Always go. The house will be yellow. Don't get nervous. <laughs> Don't that <laughs> well, I was just in here though, and you didn't even have any of this down here. Nope, it was just, just the outline just, and, yeah. and the reddish and yellowish canvas. And, uh, one thing I'm looking forward to a lot is um, capturing the reflections of the pool of the house when I get to that. Really point. neat. It looks, it looks amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, and then tell us, Gabby, what's going on yeah. here. Yeah, so this next tier is um, recreationally used, obviously, as a putting green. Um, it's a personalized putting green. Originally, it was a grass tennis court. I want to touch um, it. I kind of yeah. want to touch it a little bit. It's, it's pretty immaculate. It's cut every single day. And, um, with what? Like a with a special um, turf lawnmower. Oh. We actually don't maintain the exact turf, um, so we bring in someone special to to do the turf. Uh, Is that just bent grass? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, that's really I'm, cool. I'm the, I'm the garden person. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, <laughs> we sell grass seed yeah, at, at no, our garden cool. centers. So I'm like, ooh, what is that? Yeah. Um, and I did want to, want to get a close up to show you guys <laughs> the fountain back here because this is this was kind of like rebuilt to the original. Right? Totally. Yeah. This this water feature actually is the original. Um, these walls were for the most part all crumbled all over the property, so they were. They were rebuilt, uh, but this water feature was still in its, in its exact place. So they sort of braced it and um, and then rebuilt the walls around it. And uh, it's it's just amazing, truly to the original detail with the pergola and the grapevines coming down. Even these um, fern planters, uh, we have some original pictures. And if you look at those pictures, um, sometimes it looks almost exact. So. That's awesome. So this is the fountain that you can see all the way down from the first garden we were in back here. So it's just like this amazing vista. You can see the arbor and 
all the topiaries and the great yeah. arbor back here with the fountain. It's really amazing. So the other cool thing that you guys have to see since on the island there are no vehicles, like no trucks and cars and things like that, you guys know that they have to get around either by bicycle or horse and carriage. And the owners actually pulled out their carriages for these garden tours and they're so, so cool. You have to see them. So these are a couple of the carriages that are out on display. The other ones are right around the corner. And these are actually used, right? Totally, yeah. They're, this is a fully operational barn. So these carriages are used. And actually three of the four carriages here are original to the home. Um, they were full, fully restored, so that's why they look perfect. But Is this uh, one of them? That... This is one of them. Yeah, original to the house. But that one? This one is no. not. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. And then around the corner here, you'll see we have just some really um, usable veggie gardens and I, I love how this landscape uses its spaces um, in really practical ways you know mm -hmm. we have some really delicious raspberry patches here and uh, and just a, a pretty cool area for the horses to graze we don't cut this this area as often so that the grass stays longer for the horses and and it's a pretty cool thing it is and that's Nicholas yes that is Nicholas and Frisian King horse King they're both King. purebred Frisians they're and absolutely beautiful I don't yeah. think I've ever seen one like, I horses. mean, maybe last year when we were here, but totally. they are yeah. just absolutely beautiful. So Amazing. let's go look at the last two carriages really quick. So I think you can see it best if you come in right here. Yeah. This is kind of what we consider a Mackinac Island garage. So it's a little smaller because it just has to hold carriages. This is my favorite one, I think. Me too. If you want, um, you can see this monogram for the cottage home. Um, originally, that was the original owner's initials, but as the carriage got restored, they decided to put the cottage's monogram there. Really cool. Yeah. And all the horses tack right there for that, mm -hmm. for the carriages. And all of them are tufted. Tufting yeah. is my, <laughs> one of my things. I love it. Girl, this is yeah. the place you're meant to be. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we're going to swing around the back side yep. here, and we're going to take off down another garden. All right, so this house is called Bellevue. This is the back garden, and it was created around boulders that were already here, existing in the garden. Yep. Um, and so there's a ton of perennials in here that are absolutely wonderful. What is this type of ground cover that I see everywhere? Yeah, this is called Pachysandra. We nickname it Packy, and it's a great one. It, it is pretty vigorous and just holds its own. And it's shiny. And it's shiny. And <laughs> like yeah, that. we love to plant it sort of in rivers throughout, mm -hmm. uh, throughout our gardens. I wonder um, what zone is it? Do you know? Well, it has to be a zone that would work would, in mine. Cause it, totally. So this island is like a zone four or five yep. and we're a zone five. So I don't know yeah. why I don't have this in my garden. I think I'm going to have to look for some because I New really plants like coming the, soon. Yeah, I really like the structure of that. Mm -hmm. um, but you were telling us about what happened back here as far as trees go. If we move a little bit yeah, further, it makes sure. a lot of sense. So we're on state land right now, which means there's regulations on what we can and can't do, especially when it comes to cutting down trees. So as this landscape was being formed, um, this actually wasn't in the plans because we didn't have the permits to cut down these trees. However, there was an addition being put on on the back side of the house, which allowed us to cut down a few trees. And um, often this has been seen to happen when those first few trees that act as the barrier for the rest of the trees are cut down. The trees just can't withstand the wind. They're not used to it. And so that winter after the trees got cut down for the addition to be put in, um, a huge wind came through this, this island and actually naturally sort of clear cut this section. Like the whole area, the right? The whole area, yeah. When they came back in the spring, the trees were just laying down flat. Mm. If you can kind of see behind us, w the forest was pretty thick and that's yeah. what this looked like. Um, wow. So it was pretty cool that- um, Do you know how many trees were back here? I don't know the That'd exact number, but I would guess you know, probably close to a hundred wow. or so. Um, because the forests back here are pretty th pretty thick. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just kind of cool how nature had its way and mm -hmm. coincidentally a beautiful immaculate landscape was built. Um, mm -hmm. I love how this landscape is so much different than Craig Mars landscape in the sense that it's so natural and woodlandy. Yeah. And it's it's still very manicured and, and yeah. purposefully built but mm -hmm. it's just built in such a different way that gives a different feel. So. It totally does. Yeah. Not very far away. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So all of the rock came from this property, right? Except for yeah. the capstone on exactly. the wall. Exactly. Yeah, all this rock that we used to build these walls came from um, the basement that was dug while the addition was being put on, which is pretty all cool. All of this? All of this, yeah. Whoa. Not joking. That's a lot of um, rock. Yeah, everything that's like big boulders like this guy, 
um, these were here. So we built the rock walls around them to kind of soften it up and, uh -huh. and create the garden beds that are here. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, everything was harvested on the island, which we love to do. We love to keep material that is local on property. Um, Utilize it some way. Yeah, one, for one reason, it's really hard to, to remove it with mm -hmm. horse and carriage. So if we don't have to remove it, we love that and the clients love that. And so a lot of times we're using our natural limestone to build rock walls mm -hmm. and build structures and things. It's kind of like at Chestnut Cottage where there was that wattle fence. It's like, totally. hey, we've got all of these branches. What do we do? Yeah. What do we do Let's with build these? a fence. Yeah, yeah. why not? So I'm seeing this view, Erin, you should turn around and show that. That is a beautiful, is that an incredible or Annabelle? Anna um, yeah, the, the close one is Annabelle. Okay. The Annabelle here with the white daisies is so pretty to me. Mm -hmm. From back there, you see this beautiful ground cover. Yeah, look at that. That combination. I love that, yeah. It just gives the feel of that woodland garden that we were going for. Yeah, not so like super flashy or anything, yeah. but very, it feels very cool back here like very serene and peaceful, which is awesome. For sure. And then let's go down here because this is really, really neat. Look at how beautiful this is. But you guys maintain this all now, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. We maintain this whole property and, and plant it every year. We, we make decisions on what needs to get moved. and That's fun, yeah. That's fun. Do you guys um, like air prune these or do you, do you do some kind of pruning with the junipers or is yeah. this naturally growing like this? It's, it's definitely naturally growing and we haven't pruned this in a while, um, so it is quite big, but when we do prune it, which will be pretty soon, mm -hmm. um, we prune it with our clippers. So we don't use a hedge trimmer or anything like that. We'll go in and, and lace it out. Like um, selectively yeah, cut out. Yeah, selectively so that it keeps that lacy look and it I doesn't get that. you know too manicured. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's, that's kind of the, the technique that we want to use in this garden mm -hmm. is, is manicuring things so that they look awesome, but mm -hmm. doing it in a way that keeps you know how it's naturally meant to be mm -hmm. so that looks really good our yeah. junipers look like sheared kind of blobs for sure which i love sheared boxwoods yeah but sheared junipers i i don't know this is really beautiful yeah and then right around the corner there are some annuals in here i love the broalia with the um yellow begonias there that's a really pretty combination yeah i love that color scheme mm -hmm. we've used it a lot this year because that broalia is just super stunning. So do you kind of like every year you kind of have like a specific color scheme you go with or something you're um, liking that year? Not necessarily color scheme. We have our like go-to plants mm -hmm. that we know are going to perform and be awesome. Um, so I guess in our whole annual order, maybe there's sort of a color scheme, mm -hmm. but as far as each property, it's a different planting, different, That's cool. different color every year. So everyone looks a little bit different yep. and every garden has its different look. Yeah. So is there anything we need to know about this cottage in particular? Yeah, the front of this cottage is designed as we call a Caskey cottage. Um, Caskey was a gentleman who designed a lot of the cottages on our island. And uh, it's just beautiful. It really captures the Mackinac style. And it was beautifully renovated um, and, and beautifully maintained as well. Mm -hmm. And it's one of my favorite front porches. Um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, not the biggest, but it's just uh, got an amazing view. And yeah, just look at that. Yeah, the gardens that surround it really give it a, a peaceful, quiet feel. Mm -hmm. So this view is beautiful. Yeah, this is actually my favorite part of the landscape. It's just a stunning view with the flagstone pathway and the different varieties of hydrangeas that we've used. Tiny tough stuff and panicle limelight hydrangeas that are just stunning. Um, and it's, yeah, one of my favorite, favorite spots. It's gorgeous. And then right here, right to our right, mm -hmm. there is a hedge of limelights right there. These are my very favorite hydrangea <laughs> ever. I just planted about six of these at home. Yeah. Yep. As a recently. hedge? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We love to use hydrangeas as hedges. Love it. Well, thanks, Gabby, for taking us through and giving us all the details. Yeah. Really thanks fun. for hanging out with yeah. us on our island. So this is the last ride back to the hotel, so we're going to jump on it. Don't miss it. Nope. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So we just made it back to the hotel, so we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do for the evening because we do have one more night left here. There is some kind of a river or lake cruise leaving here soon, and we might do that. We're gonna go check it out. I think we got back to the Grand a little bit too late to make the cruise, which, you know, at this point, after doing a presentation today and kind of having the whole build up and the stress of that and then doing more garden touring this afternoon, I think that I'm not that sad about missing the cruise. I'm a little bit tired. I'm ready to go find somewhere nice to eat dinner with Erin and just enjoy the rest of our last evening here on the island. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little glimpse at a couple more gardens on the island just to get a feel for what it's like. It's been such a wonderful time. We really enjoyed it and we really appreciate you guys following us and sharing love. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.